Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar, and we are at day nine of NaNoWriMo, which means it is once again Tarot Tuesday. To that end, I'm going to talk to you a little more about my tarot practice, and I'm going to show you a new card spread. Uh, last time we did just a single card pull uh, from the Smith Weight deck, and this time uh, I'm going to talk to you about some of the new decks that have emerged the last 10 or 15 years uh, that aren't traditional tarot decks. They get called oracle decks or inspiration decks, um, sometimes even angel decks. I have a Zen deck. <clears throat> These are typically card decks with fewer cards in them. They are often more elaborately illustrated. Um, you can do many of the same things with an oracle deck uh, that you can do with a standard tarot deck. There are some things that won't work. Um, uh, but the spread I'm going to show you today is something that will work with either an oracle deck or a standard tarot deck. So, uh, in terms of that spread, I'm going to show you how to do a three card pull. Now, uh, anytime you are pulling or telling or reading tarot, it's not just about the individual cards, but it's about the relationships among the cards. In with a traditional tarot deck, doing a traditional tarot spread, or even doing an, a more newly invented spread, the positions of the cards themselves have specific meanings, and whether the cards are right side up or reversed, uh, upside down, that is, um, changes that meaning accordingly. Uh, with the oracle decks, the rules are a little more fluid. Um, so what I'm going to show you with a standard is a standard three card pull, and you can do a three card pull with either the oracle or a traditional tarot deck. Um, the meanings for a three card pull are variable, and sometimes you're going to pull three cards and the relationships between the cards is just going to kind of leap out at you. They will sort of announce themselves. But kind of standard ways of understanding a three card pull would be past, present, and future. Okay. Um, another possibility would be um, the kind of that which is deeper down, that which is at the surface, uh, that which is still up in the air. Okay. Um, so there are a variety of ways to assign the positions or the functions of the three cards. I've already done the pull. Um, I went from the top of the deck, the middle of the deck, and the bottom of the deck, because I wanted to have a chance to consult uh, Fairchild's book. Um, here. The Circus Oracle and the Nifty Circus Oracle Guidebook. And I wanted to look at a couple of other resources. So this is what the pull looks like. One, two, and three. And here we have card one, which is the first card of the deck in this case, meant for you. Card 43, date with destiny. And card 33, the proud pirouette. Uh, meant for you is a card that's a bad opportunity. Something you've asked for has arrived. Be ready. Date with destiny is what it sounds like. Destiny has shown up at your door. What will you do? The Proud Pirouette is a card that deals with confidence versus self-doubt. The Proud Pirouette is about stepping into what you are offered uh, without second guessing. So there are all kinds of things that suggest themselves to me with these three cards. Think about what suggests itself to you. Uh, what might what it might suggest about your NaNoWriMo experience or for any of the characters in the novel you are creating. You can comment if you like and I hope that it will give you something to think about as you're working this week. I will see you once again tomorrow. Bye-bye.